Hey 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 guys, welcome to the HDR image based lighting in Blender premium series of tutorials on creativeshrimp.com. My name is Gleb Alexandrov and today we're going to be talking about how to render 360 degrees 32 bit HDR spherical panorama in Blender. Woo, that was cool. And what you see on the screen is exactly this. Is the high dynamic range panorama captured in Blender? It may look a little bit distorted, but that's how it should look. Uh, we can use the HDR panoramas like this to illuminate our 3D scenes and generally speaking to set up the image based lighting in Blender. So let's go ahead and let's get started. We have this scene. Nothing really special, just an interior scene with a very bright window, which is uh, made using the emission shader and the area light. And let's take a look around. The back of this room falls into darkness, but for the demo purposes that really doesn't matter. I even hope that it will create a nice contrast. And if you go to the color management tab, you can switch to filmic color management if you installed filmic blender, or you can tweak the exposure value, but in the end that won't matter, as we are gonna capture the 32-bit image. Let's create a camera, we go and shift A, select in camera, let's press G to move it up, hit N to open the right tool shelf. I'm going to set the X rotation to 90, Y to 0 and Z to 90 degrees also. That will place the camera perpendicular to the window and that's what we need. Now I'm pressing the 0 key on the numpad uh, to enter the camera view. And what we need to do now is come over to the camera settings. And for example, we can try changing the focal length, but that will give us nothing. Because even if we set it to a lower number, the camera still will show only one side of the scene. We have to click on the panoramic and in the type we have to select uh, equirectangular. Equirectangular means uh, that it will render the spherical panorama basically. It will render the complete representation of the scene, kind of a 360 degrees image. Now in the render settings I'm gonna enable the border checkbox. Okay, so we have to make sure that the camera isn't tilted like this. Because ultimately this will create a bunch of problems for us later on when we'll be setting the image-based lighting. So in my case the X rotation is 90 and the Z rotation is 90. Now I will place the camera just on top of the table and when we are moving the camera you can see how uh, the viewport changes. I'm moving the camera closer to the window to make the window larger in the final image. And now a very important thing. The X resolution must be two times bigger than the Y resolution. We have to obey this rule uh, to get the correct spherical panorama. And what I also did is set the resolution up to 200%, so the final resolution will be 4096 by 2048. Also I set the render samples to 400, in case of this scene it will produce a relatively noise-free render. Next we can just click render and wait for a while, because this will take a while. To get a crisp panorama we have to use very large resolutions, uh, starting at 8k pixels wide for example. Unfortunately that means that the render time can just skyrocket. Alright folks, so we have just rendered 32-bit spherical panorama. Now we can just save it. Okay, let's go image. Save as image or just hit F3. And in this tab we have to choose the format which supports 32-bit data, Radiance HDR or OpenEXR. And I'll set the color depth float full. That means completely unclamped 32-bit image. And I'll name it uh, HDRI 4K underscore 01 and click save as image. Ta-da! That's it for the first half of the tutorial. Now let's just test the HDR panorama that we've made. I've created this simple scene with the spheres. Let's set the viewport shading to rendered and keep it like that for the rest of the tutorial. And in the top window I'm gonna open the node editor because we'll be tweaking the environment nodes. So let's press shift A. Texture. Environment texture. And now we have to navigate uh, to the folder where we saved uh, the HDR image. Click on the preview to not mistakenly select something else. And I'll click open image. Easy peasy. Now we have to drag the color output over there. We can now tweak the strength of the environment and so on. And that's how we set up a basic image based lighting. We take the rectangular panorama which was made of photos, uh, which was captured in Blender like we did. And we tell Cycles, the render engine of Blender, uh, to use this to illuminate our 3D objects. And after that we just enjoy fantastic lighting without any light sources whatsoever. 
What we can do now is add the mapping node connect it to the vector input of the environment texture and also press shift A, go input and add in the texture coordinates hook the generated output into the vector input of the mapping node now we can use it to change the texture coordinates of the environment for example we can change the Z rotation you know, just to quickly test how our environment looks maybe we'll have to go back to the original blend file and re-render it using the different settings but I think it looks pretty nice. It also has, obviously, a wide dynamic range, so we can play with the exposure and with other settings. Let's now go over to the Color Management tab and try tweaking the exposure. See, the random transform and all that stuff, the exposure, gamma, curves, are useless when we capture a GRI, but when we actually set up the image-based lighting, it makes sense to tweak these settings. For example, we can turn on the filmic color management, about which we have been talking a lot in this crash course, which obviously you can get by visiting creativeshrimp.com. It's freemium. Okay, cool. And the one last step I'm gonna do is uh, set the depth of field. I'm increasing the size of the aperture and setting up the distance. And I wonder if you agree here, uh, the depth of field makes everything look great. Even if you have a rubbish like this, you can enable depth of field and get something decent out of it. That's how it works. Depth of field. Alright guys, I hope this tutorial was useful to you. My name is Gleb Alexandrov and you're watching the image-based lighting crash course on creativeshrimp.com. Feel free to show me your renders on Twitter and Facebook and let me know your thoughts about this experimental course. And drink more coffee.